Alright, so, in my last video I said this. Also, why the fuck do people care about gamer scores and shit? What purpose do they serve? I was just having a bit of a rant, really. It's kind of venting. But no, I did want to know more. So before I delved into this topic, I decided to make a few notes before I did any actual research. Uh, notes on, you know, what I thought the value of these achievements really were. So firstly, I put down, there is no value. And that's it. And now that I've established my hypothesis, I've got to backtrack. This is the PlayStation Trophy subreddit. So I first came here when I was researching for the Adam's Venture video. And while doing so, I came across something I wasn't entirely familiar with. Playing a video game purely for the trophies you can unlock. It just kind of, that just kind of makes games a chore, especially if you aren't even enjoying the fucking thing. All right, now have a look over here. Have a look at this. A subreddit for those in the quest of the almighty platinum. So what is this? It's probably meant to be an emote. Almighty is an interesting word to use. As something you'd see being used, like to describe a Greek god or, I don't know, a fucking hurricane or something. Not this fucking grey icon on the screen. Alright, so, clearly I'm overlooking something. Like, there's gotta be a reason as to why trophies and achievements are so sought after. Alright, no, 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 no. I wanna be clear. I understand achievements. So when I say I don't understand why achievements are sought after, I don't mean the actual objective of the achievement itself. I get that if you really enjoy a game, you might want to challenge yourself with like a higher difficulty or a bonus mode or something. And yeah, sure, it's nice to have something on your profile to show that you beat Resident Evil 2 on hardcore, even if you fucking cheated by using the DLC weapons. Like yeah, clearly you enjoyed the game and you wanted a challenge. Now it gives people who come to your profile a little bit of insight in the type of games you like and your personality, your play style. But this is what I don't understand. Leveling systems. I don't get it. So does having a higher gamer score or PlayStation level grant users like perks? Maybe like a price discount on a shitty game that no one ever plays or a few days free of Xbox Live or something? Well yeah, but no. Or more no than yes. Barely any yes actually, just pretty much all no. With a leveling system in mind, it doesn't take a genius to come to the conclusion that majority of the people who collect achievements are just doing it so they can increase whatever the fucking level they are on whatever platform they're on. But why do people want high levels if they seemingly don't do anything? Well, it's for a false sense of superiority. I don't want to be closed-minded and group all these people together, but it's that, it's that, it's totally that. So, I decided to ask the trophy subreddit myself. I pretty much asked them, you know, why they strive for trophies. Particularly, the, uh, almighty Platinum. Well, to my surprise, a few people actually responded. Yeah, it wasn't a lot, but truth be told, I wasn't expecting anyone to reply, so... Pretty fucking happy that I got some actual insight into these people's brains. According to one of the earlier replies, supposedly a few years ago you could get PlayStation Network vouchers due to your PlayStation level. It's sort of like the Nintendo eShop. If you purchase a game off their platform, you get a few coins back in return that you can use to get little discounts on other games. But you know, you gotta make money so they expire after a year. But for PlayStation, it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. If it ever was. Now if that actually did happen, I would chalk it up to some sort of limited promotion. Probably for like the start of the console generation. Cause the PlayStation 3's launch price was $499. $499 in the States, but... In Australia, a grand! Uh, another user stated that it was purely a case of just personal satisfaction. Which, yeah. I guess receiving a platinum trophy allows you to feel like you truly completed the game. Yeah, you've done it all. I'm just gonna contrast that with my uh, personal experience. As a kid, I 100% of the LEGO games when the PlayStation 2 didn't even have trophies. I still felt pretty accomplished with that. The concept of having something outside of the game itself to validate my personal accomplishment really never occurred to me. I was also seven and just liked Lego. Still do! Look at that! It's a little Batman! I noticed that within the replies I got, a similar consensus emerged. That being, the value for money, aka bang for your buck. Now let me share with you a theory. It's a bit wild, it's a bit out there, so hear me out. Now please keep in mind that what I am about to say has never been said before. Majority of people 
concerned with their profile levels, are just chasing clout. That's a hot scoop. This thought hasn't been conceived ever. So to really demonstrate this, we have to remove the mindset of bang for your buck. Meet the Steam leveling system, Solicit. where when it comes to achievement hunters or clout chasers, there's less bang and more buck. Because achievements do fuck all. Steam achievements don't actually impact your Steam level in the slightest. Instead, Steam has badges. And badges grant XP, which, you know, in turn, levels up your account. The only way to really get badges are to craft them. And badges are crafted from trading cards, which users receive from playing games on the Steam platform. Once you have a complete set of these cards, you can craft the badge. But there's a catch. You can only get a set amount of cards per game, and it's never enough to craft the badge. Say, even if the game gave you enough cards to craft the badge, most likely you'd get a duplicate, because fuck you. Now the purpose of this, it's uh, to encourage interaction, you know, it's, it's in the name, they're labelled trading cards, but barely anyone fucking trades them. And unlike PlayStation level and gamer score, it's slightly justified, as the sloth actually has a few uses, albeit very loose ones. Steam does this great thing where they actually take away privileges from their users. Uh, for example, while Xbox and PlayStation have a set outright amount of friends you can have, Steam cuts you off right out of the gate. On Steam you can have 250 friends, with an additional 5 friend spaces per Steam level. Which seems stupid in comparison to PlayStation and Xbox, but really, who actually has 250 actual friends? Like friends they actually know. Not just someone you played with in a lobby a few years ago and you just kind of have them sitting there on your friends list. Every so often wondering what they're doing and who the fuck they actually are. This is what I mean by loose uses, because come on, 250 friends mate, it's not dire is it? It changes very little, next to nothing. But the comparison can be made that their levels actually do something. Another loose use, uh, increased profile customization. Things such as the amount of showcases you can add to your profile. Notice how all these are sort of just bragging right things. Steam sorta has more clout-like aspects, like Game Collector. That badge changes on how many games a person owns. The fuck? Let's take it back. Let's take it back. Back on the trading cards. People don't fucking trade them, you buy them. You can effectively buy your level. There's guides online how to get cheap levels, you know, how to buy these shitty fucking badges. And it's, it's fucking great. It's great for Steam. Because Steam makes like micro sense of people. They add like $5 to their account and they buy a bunch of Steam cards, but then they've got a few leftover cents. And it can't be withdrawn from their platform, it has to stay there in limbo. Back to the Reddit thread. As much as I am grateful for the input from these users, there is one problem. They're all strangers. And as a result, could be lying to me. So I decided to ask a small group of people who could legally never lie to me. My friends. How's it going, Chief? Yo, Gabba Gabba. Ahoy. How long have you been playing video games? Oh, uh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I have been playing video games probably since I was born. Since I was like a kid. You know, since the dawn of time for me. Would you say you actively aim to get achievements? Um, I kind of just... I, I don't aim, but like, if I get bored, I'd aim for it. I'm never fussed by video game achievements. Yes. No. Not really. I just play it for leisurely activity. Achievements are basically the game encouraging you to play it more and get more out of it. Usually the hardest achievements are the ones that push you to experience the game the most. There are only a few games that I have actively aimed for achievements. Both cases were me setting a personal challenge of completing certain achievements based off of their difficulty or importance. Do you think there's any value to gamer score and the like? No. No. I don't really think they matter that much. Some people, you know, go out and try to 100% shit. They're arbitrary numbers designed to make the player think their account has more value. If you're doing it just for like, like just to flex, like I just prefer to get it from satisfaction. I mean, I guess some people take pride in them and all the achievements they've obtained from games. But personally, I don't think they're that important. You could replace it with poopy points and nothing of value would alter. 
Have you ever purchased a game purely for the achievements or the trading cards you might get? No, I have never considered the achievements or trading cards when purchasing a game. Uh, no. It's such a minor element of the Steam platform that it doesn't really cross my mind ever. I don't care about the trading cards or anything. I only ever bought Steam trading cards just to, like, get shit to make my Steam profile look pretty, but just for the achievements or whatever, no, not really. The only reason I ever buy a game is the obvious, really, if it's entertaining or fun. Never for the achievements or trading cards, etc. I have purchased one game for the achievements, which was a 10,000 achievement game, just because I thought it'd be funny, plus it came in a bundle with a set of hentai games. Have you ever purchased trading cards to level up your Steam level? No. Yes, I have purchased cards, but not for the Steam level. Uh, no. I've just sold them. The only time I've purchased Steam cards deliberately was to make a set for a badge and emoticons for a game I really enjoyed. I sell all my Steam cards for dollar 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 So this whole video I've sort of been zigzagging around a very loose topic. And I don't doubt that the thought has crossed your mind of how can I be so sure a majority of people who go for achievements and buy Steam cards are doing it purely for bragging rights. Because I'm projecting! That's what I did! Look at that! What a funny fucking number! I'm a piece of shit!